Hello everyone, welcome to the Reds Take, happy Friday. I know it's football season, but basketball is around the corner, and it's time to go over my preseason NBA predictions. Now, if you want more of an in-depth analysis on stuff, um, then you can look at my article. They'll come on my LinkedIn page down to Red, if you want it from there. So for this specific video, video I'm going to go more over like the records and what I think the playoffs look like and all that. Um, so let's get started with the Eastern Conference. Um, for the number one seed, I had that being Boston, because um, even with Porzingis out for the first half of the month, you know, minimum, they bring literally everyone back from last year's final squad. So I assume they will pick up where they left off. The two seed, I have that being the New York Knicks again. Um, I like all the um, acquisitions they made, you know, get rid of Randall and acquiring Anthony Towns instead, get rid of Bridges from the Nets, re-signing Anobi. I'm getting, you know, key role players like Cameron Payne for free agency. Just, they had some really good moves there. On three, I have Philadelphia because of the big Paul George move that they got. They also made other solid moves, like getting Caleb Martin from the Heat and retaining certain players like Kelly Uber Jr. from last year. Um, so I like the moves they made. Number four, I have Cleveland. Um, basically, they besides switching up the coach, they bring mostly everyone back. Um, and we'll, and I feel like they could be a potential dark horse uh, to make some noise. We'll see. Another potential dark horse. Um, because it made to the Eastern Conference Finals last year is Indiana, is who I have at the five spot. Um, they bring, again, mostly everyone back. Now, because they didn't make any big defensive upgrades, um, we'll see how that affects them in the postseason, but at least they should make it there once again. Uh, six, Milwaukee. While they made a few um, key uh, pieces in the offseason uh, by getting certain role players like Torian Prince and stuff, um, I just feel like, you know, the roster's just too old, you know, not good enough defensively, and, and that would cost them, at least in the playoffs. Uh, number seven, you know, I got Miami. Um, we'll see how the Heat are, because the health was their main issue last year. Um, so we'll see if Jimmy Butler and others will remain healthy. And if so, then they could be potentially dangerous. Eight, you got Orlando. Well, I love the KCP got that they got in the offseason because they needed more offense. Um, the fact that they made the playoffs as one of the worst shooting teams last year says a lot. Um, nine, I got Charlotte. They made a lot of key moves. They got a lot of good role players. Like they got Josh Green from the Mavs. Um, they got you know, Grant Williams last year from the Mavs as well. They re-signed Miles Bridges and they have the rookie last year, Bray Miller. You know, it's projected to be improved and all that. Um, so I like the direction they're going. And then last but not least, to get the final playing tournament spot, number 10 seed, to have that being Chicago. Uh, mainly because they still got Vucevic and Levine and Kobe White and all that. So while they're not, so while they got rid, so while DeRozan left and all that, they're still in the, kind of that mediocre spot. And then first team out, I have that being Atlanta, because I feel like without DeJounte Murray, um, if Trey went, Young were to get injured, that would ruin the whole season, because they don't have a lot of depth there in Atlanta. Uh, and then the last four teams I'm taking, you know, 12 seed, I have that being Toronto, 13 Detroit, 14 Brooklyn, 15 Washington, but you can have that in New York, you want, it that makes sense. Okay, now in the West, the number one seed, I have that being Oklahoma City. Um, I, they basically returned mostly everyone, and then they got upgrades with Isaiah Hartenstein. Um, he'll be out for the first couple months, but once he gets back, that'll be a nice addition. And then they got rid of Giddy and got Caruso instead, which I feel like is a nice swap there. Um, but number two, you got Minnesota. You know, obviously Cat leaves, but they get Julius Randle and Dante DiVincenzo, who could have a big role. Uh, and I like the other role players that they got in the offseason. Uh, number three, you got Dallas. I love the moves they made. You get Clay Thompson. You get um, Najee Marshall, who's going to replace Derek Jones Jr. And then you get rid of Tim Hardy Jr. for Quentin Grimes. I like the moves they made there. Number four, you got Phoenix. Um, while Frank Vogel was at the whole issue, at least they got at least a little bit of upgrade. Mike Boone Hoser, I thought that was a good hire. And then they desperately needed a point guard because while Booker can handle the ball, that's not his thing. He's more of a shooting guard. So they got, you know, Tyus Jones from the Wizards, and I like that move for the Suns. Now, the bench is still kind of iffy, um, but I feel like they'll um, get off to a better start than they did last year. And number five, you got the L.A. Lakers, and that's assuming that LeBron's health is not going to deteriorate, assuming that AD is going to stay healthy a lot like he did last year, which is actually a surprise. It's assuming um, Re J.J. Reddick's X's and O's will definitely be an upgrade over Darvin Ham, and it'll help improve the roster, because as far as the roster overall goes, they didn't make much of an upgrade, so that could hinder them going forward. Uh, number six, you got Denver. You know, while they still return the two-time MVP and the best player in the league in Jokic, 
yeah, losing KCP, you know, you like they just don't have a lot of depth at Denver whatsoever. And also Jamal Murray's kind of been like regressing a little bit. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll kind of see what Denver does there, but I'm not liking the direction they're going. On 70, you got Sacramento. They make the big move to get a DeMar DeRozan because uh, the off, not the offense was an issue for them, but they definitely need to be um, better than they were last year um, since they missed out on the playoffs last year. And despite being over 500, which is unfortunate, but it is what it is. Uh, eight, I got Houston. I feel like they were soup. They were on the rise last year with Ime Doga as the head coach, and that's why I love the hire in the first place because he's a good culture builder, and I feel like he'll continue to um, work work his magic there to where uh, they could be in the playing tournament. Number nine, I got Memphis, um, basically tied with Houston. I feel like. Um, since all the core players from Memphis were either out or injured last year, they're going to be better than they were last year. And then number 10, I got New Orleans. Uh, Zion's health is always going to remain a mystery. I like the move they got to get DeJounte Murray to get more scoring depth there. Um, we'll see if that pays off. Number 11, I got Golden State. Um, I know, you know, Kaminga and Pajinski have hops offside. And I know Jammer Green turns, but Steph Curry really needs like a bona fide all star with him, and Golden State Warriors don't have that. So I feel like that'll cost them a playoff spot. And then 12 Clippers with Kawhi being out. That's what it is. What it is. 13 Utah, 14 San Antonio, 15 Portland. And you can have them mostly in the order there, and it makes sense. Okay, so now for the play in tournament results in the East. You see, you'd have 10 Chicago versus 9 Charlotte. I would take Charlotte to win that matchup. Um, and then, and then you got eight Orlando versus seven Miami. That would be a good defensive battle there. It'd be a close game, but I would go Miami there. So then you get a nine Charlotte versus eight Orlando matchup um, to get the final playoff spot. And Orlando's obviously been there last year. Um, they're good defense. They made the, like I said, they made some good nice upgrades in the offseason. In Charlotte, I don't trust them to make the playoffs quite yet. So I have Orlando win that game to take the final playoff spot. And then the then the West plan you have ten New Orleans versus. Uh, nine, uh, Memphis, and I would take Memphis to win that matchup, um, with all their playoff experience, successful playoff experience, and, and then you get the eight Houston versus seven Sacramento matchup, um, and I would take Sacramento in a game since at home, so then you got, uh, then you got nine Memphis versus eight Houston, and this is where I have my lone upset in the play-in tournament. Uh, to where I have um, Memphis getting upset there over Houston um, to get the final playoff spot. Okay, so now playoffs. East round one, you got eight Orlando versus Boston. What Orlando could make things interesting. I think Boston will sweep them. And then you got seven Miami versus two New York. That would be a very interesting series, one that Miami could easily pull off the upset, but I'm going to take the Knicks to win that one. Uh, next, you got six Milwaukee versus three Philadelphia. Um, while while Milwaukee could get the upset there, again, I, I just feel like by the playoff times when you get an old roster is not good defensively, that's going to cost them. So Philly wins that one. So I have Philly in six there. Um, and then I forgot to say New York is six in the last one. So I have New York six, Philly six, and then with Indiana Cleveland, this will be a fascinating series to come down to the wire. But I'm going to take the Pacers to get the upset there in seven minutes because I. Because in the playoffs, Cleveland tends to regress offensively, and with and you can't do that against an offensive firepower in Indiana. Okay, now, now uh, East semifinals, you got five Indiana versus number one Boston. I feel like it'll be an interesting series, um, and this time Boston will not get the sweep, but they will still get the win in the series. I have Boston winning in six. Then you got three Philadelphia versus two New York Knicks rematch from last year as well. And this time, it will go seven games, unlike last year, we went to six. It will come down to the wire. And I know picking Philadelphia in the playoffs bites me every time. But with the Paul George and other acquisitions they made, I feel like this could finally be the year where they could do it. Because if they can't do it this year, then they probably won't ever then beat Aaron, in all honesty. Um, but I would take Philly to get the upset there and win the seven games. So in the Eastern Conference Finals, you have a Philly versus Boston matchup. And uh, since Boston has Philly's number, I would have Boston winning that one. Um, in six games okay so now for the west first round you got um eight memphis versus one oklahoma city that would be a, an interesting series competitive series but i think oklahoma city will wrap that one up in five maybe six but probably five 
Uh, seven Sacramento versus two Minnesota. I'd have Minnesota win that one pretty comfortably. I have Minnesota win that one in five. Gentlemen sweep. Six Denver versus three Dallas. I'd have the Mavs winning that series in six. Um, I just I feel like I said I feel like Denver's like a depth of cost in there. And then five um, L.A. Lakers versus four Phoenix. I feel like the Lakers' size will be a hassle for Phoenix to deal with because they don't have as much size um, per se. So I feel like I would take the Lakers to win that matchup in six games. So then in the second round, you got the Lakers versus the Thunder, and, and that would be an interesting matchup. Um, but I feel like Oklahoma City will end up winning the matchup in six games. And then you got Dallas at Minnesota rematch from last year. And I would take Dallas once again to win that matchup, and Dallas wins the six. So then in the West Finals, you got Dallas versus Oklahoma City, a rematch from last year. It was a great series last year. And this one, this time it will go seven games. And this time I will have Oklahoma City getting the win. So I want you to get both one seeds in the finals. You got one Oklahoma City versus one Boston in the finals. This would be a very interesting series because I feel like Oklahoma City is kind of a younger, similar version of what Boston is right now. Um, I feel like it will come down to the wire, but it's just hard to pick back to back champions. Therefore, I'll take Oklahoma City to get the big win and to get their first championship in Oklahoma City. So again, for the most part, there's a lot there's a lot of shock there, but then there's a little few upsets along the way because you gotta have that. Um, so hopefully you guys liked my prediction. Thank you very much for listening to my podcast today. Please subscribe to my channel and turn about me. Thank you very much. You now have a wonderful day.